How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about two new releases that are a little delayed. I took kind of like a like two weeks off after the new year, give myself a bit of a break. Uh, and now, hopefully, we are back into the swing of things. And first up is the newest film from Guillermo del Toro, featuring the likes of Bradley Cooper, Rooney Mara, Kate Blanchett, Ron Perlman, Willem Dafoe, and many, many more in Nightmare Alley. Come on in and behold the mysteries of the universe! No, no. I want to give you the world and everything in it. What are you talking about? We got a little mind reading show. There's a woman, Abigail. Oh, God. Teach me. Teach you. Everybody has some shadow from their past. Oh, you're trouble, ain't you? What if I told you I can get my hands on a two person act for us? <laughs> Bradley Cooper plays a drifter who inadvertently finds his way into becoming a carny. Whilst touring, he forms friendships with many other of the carnies and discovers that he makes for a pretty good hustler, so in turn goes on the road as a mentalist performing for crowds. However, when he encounters the mysterious Dr. Ritter, there begins a battle of wits against Cooper's conman. One thing that can never be denied with a Guillermo del Toro film is that his visuals are always breathtaking and that cannot be understated here this is a beautiful looking movie the cinematography adheres to typical noir conventions but remains so crisp and clean and the production design might just rival the tragedy of macbeth for that oscar in a few months time i mean the elaborate carnival sets to the grimy city slums are meticulously detailed with each corner kind of telling its own story. The score by Nathan Johnson is terrific too, as are the performances. Bradley Cooper continues to be on his hunt for an Oscar, and while this year may not prove to be his year, this is yet another fascinating, a multi-layered character that Cooper portrays so well, even up into the film's fantastic final moments. There is a shot final shot of this film honestly is some of the best work that Bradley Cooper has ever done. Kate Blanchett is magnificent too. She's almost like a snake in this film, a slippery serpent sneaking her way around, gradually constricting her prey. She's utterly hypnotic in some scenes and then unbelievably commanding in others. Rooney Mara does pretty well despite a, a, a fairly thinly written character and as to be expected there are a surplus of supporting performances some are recognizable uh, partners that have worked with Guillermo del Toro before some of them are slightly newer faces but they all do a fantastic job I will say though it, it isn't quite a home run and it doesn't rank as highly as some other Guillermo del Toro pictures mostly because I feel like it's about 20 to 30 minutes too long it's a two and a half hour film and I don't want to say that I, it felt that length, but I do think that with some trimming, that pacing could have just been a little bit neater. And then I think there are some character motivations that perhaps don't feel like they were properly explained. I feel like, not that I would need to be spoon-fed information, but maybe just a little bit more time to understand why certain characters made these certain decisions would have just helped a little bit more to fully digest, especially towards the film's ending. But on the whole, it's another solid hit for GDT. His direction remains unparalleled, and in this instance, he is just flexing when orchestrating both the cinematography and production team. His ensemble all do great work, even if the material can seem maybe stretched just a touch. There is, of course, the whole man versus monster theme that Guillermo del Toro is known for, but in Nightmare Alley, the unpredictability and originality are what truly sells it. I just can't necessarily see myself rushing back to watch it right away. So, I'm going to give Nightmare Alley a 7 out of 10. And the other film that I saw over the past few days was the long-awaited return of a classic horror franchise with 
Scream. This isn't funny, Amber. When you like to play a game, Tara. The town of Woodsboro is still haunted by the spree of attacks throughout its history and is about to have yet another series of murders hit. This time round, the familiar faces we know and love take a bit more of a back seat as some new characters take centre stage as they navigate the underlying mystery of who this ghost face is and why are these killings happening in the first place. Now, pardon the pun, but the slasher genre has kind of died a bit of a death in the past few years. Yeah, there's been some revamps and ones that have tried to kind of switch up the genre but there hasn't really been a good old-fashioned slasher film in quite a while so as if we lit a beacon asking for aid scream has come along just when we need it in the hopes to bring back the life that this genre so desperately needs now the biggest challenge with a new scream film is how do you replicate what Wes Craven did uh, with, well, at least with his original film and then his subsequent sequels without now having Wes Craven? Fortunately, directors Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillett have been able to pull off a film that I think Wes Craven would have been so proud of, and they emulate his style, especially when it came to the screen movies, so well, as well as still adding their own spin. On this series. There are some gloriously directed set pieces here, one of which takes place inside a kitchen where I at least felt like they were properly riffing and taking the piss out of this over-reliance Hollywood now seems to have on jump scares and they're exploiting that, completely dissecting it apart in this one set piece thanks to meticulous framing and editing. It was so amazing to just sit and watch because they are literally drawing suspense out of every moment conceivable and that is because i mean as you would expect from a screen film it is so ridiculously meta it references horror movies left right and center as well as this supposed new elevated horror subgenre discussing films like the babadook hereditary the witch and how those films supposedly contradict and conflict against the slasher genre and then even decides that it's going to delve into like the toxic fandom territory which i found superly superly that's not a word um ridiculously fascinating considering that is a an area that i've actually studied um and that that really really paid off for me especially because scream has always been commenting and it always had its finger on the pulse of the current state of horror and i think that this one did a really good job at just getting that down for example there's a brilliant conversation between a group of friends where they're just discussing the whole notion of uh, requels which is kind of like a, a, a reboot or a soft reboot where you've still got these legacy characters and you've got new characters coming into the fray as well and up until that point in my head i'm just thinking this feels like the force awakens and then they directly reference it. But above all else, it's a terrific slasher movie that keeps you guessing on who the killer is. And it also features some really friggin' brutal murders too. The mystery itself is consistently engaging and that is in itself boosted by the fact that you have a really talented ensemble working here. The returning characters of Sydney, Gale and Dewey all fit back into their mold so well. However, they do seem relatively ancillary in their involvement, in their role in this movie, but that didn't bother me too much because, again, because it's Scream, they're kind of addressing that fact in itself. Instead, it's actually the newer faces that make more of an impression. Melissa Barrera is as close as I think you could get to saying that she is the film's lead, and she's very charming, as is Jack Quaid, who is her boyfriend in the film. He makes some 
quite funny quips as well. Jenna Ortega probably steals the whole film for me. She is a proper good old-fashioned scream queen, and I would say some of the, some of the bits that she gets to do in this film could go down as a future horror movie icon. And yes, of course, I'm going to avoid spoilers. Don't worry, this is a safe territory. But the reveal itself of who the killer or killers may be and their motivations is A, really well explained and quite a nice surprise too. And B, one performance in particular just really reminded me of that unhinged nature of Stu, played by Matthew Lillard in the original Scream. The newest edition of Scream is right up my alley. It's brutal, smart, funny, and its central mystery is wholly investing. It's great to see the old familiars back again, but the new faces give this film a massive boost. I loved all the meta-commentary and self-referential attitude, but most of all, I really appreciated that the film put being a great slasher film first. It's definitely the best of the series since the original. So, I'm going to give Scream, or Scream 5, or Scream 2022, the new Scream, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Nightmare Alley and Scream. Let me know, have you had a chance to see these films yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. But that is all we have time for, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hello! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.